Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the Gerbil, and in today's video, I'd like to talk about CLS versus all six GLs with the Chupio Datacron. It's actually really easy to beat Luke, pretty easy to beat C and Slicker. You want to avoid Jabba the Hutt, Lord Vader, and Kenobi. Vader is interesting because you can take him down to only his retinue, which is nice if you are looking at like a two squad mop up in GAC. You can uh, CLS take out everyone in pretty easily and then clean up with like Imperial Troopers or something. Anyway, I haven't made a video recently. It's, it's actually only my third in a month or so. I've been going through a difficult time and uh, so I'm not sure how frequently I'll be posting, but I've been doing CLS versus the GLs for fun. As many of you know, I really advocate chasing the fun, not the meta. So if you like that kind of content and what I provide, please hit like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. Other than that, I'm gonna to try to make some more videos. Um, this is a busy time of the year, but here's the Datacron I've been using. It is the Chupio uh, level nine that gives him stacking offense and 50% bonus protection to the team every time he uses an ability. I've also experimented back and forth with uh, the level three and the level six. I prefer the level three that I believe it does 2% health damage to the target for every debuff. Um, I really, really like that one. It, it seems to add a lot more kick to the squad because you apply quite a few debuffs actually with the CLS squad. So like right there, we just landed five, which would have been 10% damage to uh, Hermit Yoda. So it, it really helps amp up the team that already does a lot of damage. Now the level six is interesting. I've explored three different level sixes on the team. Um, the one that I like most is uh, the ability whereby whenever um, droid allies, I believe it says droid allies, deal um, stun or inflict stun or stagger on the enemy, it hits them for 35% of their maximum health, which means, again, you are doing an insane amount of damage, right? So every time Chupio assists, he's gaining 5% stacking offense. And of course he assists with every rebel. So his offense just goes through the roof. The longer the match goes, the more powerful he is. Unfortunately, against Slicker, this, uh, this puts you in a precarious situation though, because I have battled Slicker 10 times and I have won eight of them. The two times I did not win is when I was unable to kill Kylo Ren Unmask. Everyone else is pretty easy. Um, I'll go through turn order uh, as we look at all three of these battles. Again, different matchups, but I mean, same matchup, but different opponents. So I'll go through turn order in a moment. But Slicker uh, is very easy to wind up with a situation where you just can't kill crew. Um, it, it's there is a trick to it, but you're more likely to time out if the Kylo Ren Unmasked is high enough gear relative to your own team and properly modded, and more importantly, is sporting uh, datacrons that provide a substantial enough health boost for him. I think it's health, it could be protection, but I believe it's health. Um, if he has a datacron plus proper modding and his health pool is just through the roof, uh, you're probably gonna time out, so do watch out for that. Uh, the trick, though, is to try to time a Chupio AoE that should hit five, six times, I think, simultaneously. So it will hit before he has a chance to recover his dim, or his life, and like that. And you can see, nonetheless, we kind of whiffed on it. So we're gonna just let the clock run on full automatic to develop stacking offense. Again, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. And once again, down he goes. Right. So every time crew is hit, he recovers, I think, 8% health. Please don't quote me on that, but I think it's 8% health. So you got to stack it up. All right, now C. The trick about C, and it's not really a trick, you just need to eliminate any major threats and then bypass them as best you can and take out Sith Eternal. 
Now, if you can't bypass them, of course, because you're deceived or whatnot, then you'll probably just have to clear out the board. And it's not too hard. With the right data chrono, that 35% damage from the stun, the 2% health damage from the debuffs, uh, then basically you should be able to one-shot any, almost anyone on the opening barrage. Of course, not a tank like Malik or Malgus, but um, Watt, Basilshan, Fallen, um, Hux, they should go down on that opening salvo because the opening shot will stun 35% damage plus Han's damage, plus since stun is a debuff, it's another 2% damage, plus assist from Chewie, Chewbacca, uh, and Chupio, and then the second tap from Han. So it's just like, it's an incredible whack, 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 and down it goes. So you drop anyone here like Watt, then you just walk around the board, taking out everyone you can. Now, Malgus is just a pain, but that's okay. We're still gonna actually beat him, believe it or not. So if if Chu P O goes down, Chu P O goes down, then you're you're gonna lose. Um, you need that stacking offense, and you need that six hit AOE, right? Because for Chu P O, every time an enemy is defeated and he does the AOE, he will land an additional hit up to five, which means that there's only one target there. He will hit them six times. So we're just we're just hoping that Chu P O can do it. And here we go. Oh, maybe I don't win this one. I might have lost this one. Yeah, there we go. We lost that one. I have won that one. I do promise. I have won that one a couple times. All right, but here we go. Opening salvo against Hux. You need to get rid of him because he will prevent turn meter gain on your team. And C uh, CLS team has a fair amount of turn meter gain. So you open up against Hux. If everybody is modded right, um, and you are high enough relic again relative to your opponent's gear level, whatever that be, then you should be able to drop Hux without any real concern. If Hux does not go down, then you need to do anything you can to get him out of the picture. Once he's gone, I recommend going after Lobster, that's the red Sith Trooper. And then after you've gotten rid of Hux and Sith Trooper, you just basically want to shift your focus over on Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, who falls down so, so easily. Uh, at this point, hopefully you have absolute board dominance. There's nobody who on your team who's down. You probably want to hit automatic for a little bit to maximize the utility of the Datacron 5% stacking offense until you can do that right there, right? So hit him with the biggest hits you can. Uh, Han Solo's middle, CLS's middle, Chewbacca's, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, and then AoE from Chupio. Now, when you're going against Jedi Master Luke, who's the easiest of the six GLs to kill, again, avoid Lord Vader, avoid Kenobi, and avoid Jabba the Hutt. But when you're going after these, I basically find that it's almost always a win if you can eliminate Master Yoda if he's there, followed by, uh, in, in order, followed by Revan and Jolie. Um, depending on which three they are, Get rid of Yoda first, then Revan, then Jolie. It's very possible Jolie will revive the other two. That's okay. Just put them right back down. I mean, they're going to fall pretty easy, especially with this damage output. Hey, I hope this was interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me that like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.